So how do you approach uh, this week and then the next week? Is it a slow build or is it the uh, same as the, the regular season? Uh, well, it's, we're not preparing for a game the senior side, so um, a lot of guys will be playing at Peel, so they'll continue on the routine. Um, and as senior side, we'll look, um, yeah, look to train on Saturday. Pretty solid session. Um, yeah, we're going to approach it to get better. We need to get better, so we need to improve our footy, and that's been something we've been focused on all year. But in particular, the last three or four weeks, we've been really focused on playing our way and improving our footy. And um, yeah, nothing changes this week. How many will play waffle? Uh, well, we get to finalise a number, so um, we'll work through that after um, training. But it'll be yeah, we'll try and get as many guys a hit out as we can, and we feel relevant. So um, yeah, there is some, a cap on how many players we can actually play at Peel, so we'll need to prioritise that, and yeah, we'll work that out after training. Just for my knowledge, what's that cap? Uh, Do you know? <laughs> just for my knowledge, I'd like to know as well. It's a, it's a scale of yeah, how many guys we have to play. Seniors versus reserves down there. And what so. was the reasoning behind that not, not playing field this week? Um, oh, I was. I think it's best prep for him, and um, for him to be around the the senior group and uh, be really specific with what he needs to work on. We feel like we can get specific work into him, and you know, I've got some injury issues to our other tall forward, so the risk part of it came into it. But um, yeah, it was. Yeah, we decided what, that's what's best for him. How did he pull up after that? It was pretty. It, he's sore in some spots, but his hemi was good, and some of the other issues he's had over the over the season were all good. So he'll get a full um, two weeks of training in, and we cherry ripe for the first final. And the rest of those those tall targets you mentioned, Griff, Tabs, Lob, how are they tracking? Uh, yeah, I probably um, lobbed them all in the same um, boat last night on the news, but individually, Lobby's. Um, the week off's done him a um, world of good. So, yeah, he'll get a couple of good weeks of training in and still avoid contact early this week. But, um, yeah, he's he's benefited from having the week off. Um, yeah, we're still working through Griff and um, how quickly we build his load up. Um, and Tabs, he'll be, he'll be touch and go this week. And, um, yeah, we're pushing it for the week after. But, yeah, we're expecting him to play the week after. With Rory, you said the other week that he kind of busted his shoulder, like a better phrase. Is before that, there was no structural damage. There's still no structural damage. It's still a pain thing with Rory. Yeah, he's he's um he's got a couple of d different things going on. So um, the week off and not getting hits um, as many. You know, he's played second ruck and down forward as a tall forward. You get a lot of hits. So avoiding that will do him the world of good. With Griff, was that something that just popped up out of nowhere? Is that like a, a long term? <coughs> it's no, tough? it's popped out, popped up um, out of nowhere a little bit. Um, yeah, so I can't, I can't really say what it is and define it, but yeah, he's sore, so we need to work through that. There's a few guys out there we've noticed already that got the, the red hats on. Um, Nathan O'Driscoll and Blake Akers, <coughs> two we may not have been expecting to see in those. How are they going? Uh, everyone's all right. Is um, just, yeah, they're a bit banged up. Um, Drew's, Drew's got a red hat on. I can't remember what happened to Drew's. But, um, yeah, Blake just got a stinger in his shoulder. So it's just a sign for players just to, when they see those guys not to go hard at them. So the fact they're out there is, is a really good sign and they'll be right with the week off. And how long till you and the coaches really start looking at, at the Bulldogs, obviously the players, focus on themselves, but yourselves and your game plan? Um, yeah, well, it's already started. Yeah, so... Next week will be just a normal week leading into a game for the, for the players, but coaches do their work pretty early and we'll have discussions towards the end of the week and played them three weeks ago, so we know a fair bit about them. Have you started looking beyond the Bulldogs in terms of what the burden of the travel might be? No. So no. one match at a time? One match at a time. Senior coaches don't go any further than that, you should know that. <laughs> but you know, travel's travel. Like we've won seven and a half games away, performed well on the road. The road... Road tra travel doesn't hold any burden to our players. So, um, yeah, we've got to get through the Bulldogs first, though. How proud are you as a coach to have Andy Brayshaw um, or Andy Brennan uh, in, in the 44 for the All-Australian? Yeah, oh, it's a great reward for effort. Um, both of them have put in um, a ton of work um, to get um, their bodies up to AFL 
uh, at a, a level where they can compete at a high level week in, week out, and that consistency has put them, um, give, give them the honours that they've got so far. So, um, yeah, everyone's been well aware of what Andy's produced this, this year, and um, that started years ago, but it's yeah, the body of work he put in over the off season with his teammates and dragged his teammates along and has held him in really good stead to be able to compete um, this year and um, embrace the challenges that, has, that have confronted him. He's been tagged a lot this year and been able to work his way through that. Um, and Brennan's done the same amount of work, but that the work he's put in has allowed him to be out there week in, week out, which probably he hasn't done in, in previous years. and. It's allowed his talents to come to the fore even more. So, um, yeah, proud of all our players, but yeah, those two get individual recognition, which is great. And, and the four, I guess, who got into the 22 and 22. I know that, you know, recognition sort of, um, they don't like individual recognition, but those four have been spoken about a lot this year and, and getting the credit they deserve. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we've had three players get recognised for um, the Rising Star nominee as well. So, um, yeah, individual recognition is great, and it's something to um, acknowledge when it happens. And um, yeah, I, all our players know that they, they play team sport and, and do it for the team. But those individual recognitions along the way are something that should be celebrated. And yeah, we do that internally. Is there anything out of the game on the weekend that you were concerned about? I guess the start was the thing that we really talk, talked about. But um, is there anything out of the weekend that you will be specifically working Yeah, well, yeah, of course. The first forty minutes was pretty ordinary footy. Uh, yeah, we didn't bring the intensity and the physicality required. And um, yeah, the scoreboard reflected that. So yeah, we reviewed that pretty heavily yesterday because we can't accept that and walk past it. And um, yeah, so we we um, yeah reviewed the first 40 minutes and reviewed 40 minutes onwards to the end of the game where we got it right. But yeah, we can't be slow out of the box this week. Or, in our next game. Is it also, also shows the character of the team make that comeback? I mean, it's happened a few times. Yeah, it shows our maturity because I don't think we would have come back from that um, in previous years. So as you as you develop as a, as a group um, and you know, your players um, get different experiences, they're able to learn from them. And um, I think that was an example of that on the weekend. We we're able to um, stick to the task and, and fix a few things that were going wrong. and get the game back on our terms. So, yeah, it was, it was another good experience. So on the pre, the pre final spy is always a little bit contentious. What are you, your thoughts about it? I mean, obviously it's probably helping you guys this year. Yeah, I was, along with a lot of rules and things that AFL put into place, I don't spend much time having an opinion about it. We just, we operate to the rules, we operate to the schedule and um, we plan around it. So I haven't really thought whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. It's gonna benefit some of our players um, some of our players, maybe not, but um, just embrace it and plan it and accept it and <laughs> move on, I suppose. Does finals experience mean anything to you? Do you think that it counts for anything? Oh, like it's, that's an, and there's another thing that's been brought up this week, finals experience, but um, you know, as a young group, you've got to start somewhere. So um, we'll do our best to prepare our players for what finals footy looks like uh, and yeah, come uh, Saturday night, there'll be no excuses. So it is what it is. <laughs> We've got to start somewhere. Um, and we get to start against a, a team that's got a lot of finals experience. So that's a great challenge for us. And obviously you start to see the game some of that in pretty quick time. Yeah. Yeah, it's our first final at Optus. And uh, our fans have been behind us all year and excited for what we've been producing. And it's going to be great to get out there and, and play in front, in front of the Purple Army. Justin, just on that, um, what you're talking about finals experience. You were part of Freo's first ever finals team back in 2003. Have you spoken about your experiences of that game to help prepare the squad? No, oh, it's a long time ago. I don't really remember. Um, I was a bit like now. There's a buzz around, and uh, there's a buzz around back then, and you now our fans were yeah right behind us and passionate, and oh, I'm seeing that now. But um, yeah, a lot of our a lot of our players haven't played finals and. You know, we'll talk, we've got a lot of finals experience around the club um, in coaching roles, uh, in admin um, and within our playing group. So we'll try and fast track as many of our players to understand what's ex what's uh, what to expect. And yeah, like I said, Saturday will produce no excuses. Can, can you lean on Matty Boyd there, who 
was part of that Dogs 2016 apprenticeship <coughs> group that were very young, didn't have a lot of finals experience, came from outside the four and did similar to what you guys are looking to do this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We try and lean on all the experiences from all our um, coaches and players. So, um, you know, Aishi's, Aishi's had a fair bit of final experience, finals experience. He, he, had, he played in four finals in 2018, so he's won. Dave and Fifey have um, made it to the big dance. So, uh, yeah, we've got a lot of experience around that we'll draw on.